In this video, we're going to look at pagination and how you can actually accomplish that really simply. I have a friend who's been working with Perl recently in the past to create paging, and he was pulling his hair out because he was trying to do it from scratch. And the first time I showed him how to paginate something with Ruby on Rails, I think he was almost an instant convert from Perl. Now, don't want to get any angry email from Perl people, just a little short story to show you how simple it is. So, in Rails, of course, we have a method. It's the paginate method or helper and it's located in the action controller for page nation it's a method or a, a not a method it's a actual class I guess underneath it there we have to look at the definition here to see what it is I believe it's a class looks like it anyway anyway the public method that we're going to use is page name and what we give it is a collection ID and a collection ID, of course, is like a an array of, of something that we want to have pages of. And then various options. So that's a, just a brief look at, at the method. We'll get more into it in a second here. Just to show you how it actually works is, here's our little movie critic application we've been playing around with in prior videos. And you'll notice that there's enough comments now that there's more than 10, apparently. And I have a next page. And I didn't generate that. That came with me when I had that paginate method call. And if I click on it, sure enough, it takes me to the next page. And I have a few more comments. Changes the link down here to previous page. If you take a look at down in the corner over here where I'm wiggling the mouse right now, but as I hover over that link, you'll see that it has appended onto it a uh, question mark page equal to. And then now the previous has question mark page equals one. So you can see how it uses that to move back and forth between the pages that it creates. Those links get called specifically in your controller. So now let's go look again at our, at our code, our, the API for our code. So our comments is what is going to be our collection ID in this case. And we have one option set, and it's per page we want 10. So you can see that's a hash that we're setting up here. So, and then actually comments get set to, comments is our actual object representing the comments on it, and then we have comment pages, our actual pages that we have. So this works in concert with, let me go find, Got to find the right form here with our list view. Go look at the list view. There we go. If we scroll down here, you're going to see that here is our setup for these links. And what it's going to do is run some stuff for us to say, hey, previous page, link to previous page, if this is true if comment pages current dot previous so it's checking if this actually exists and then this one's gonna say okay link to this if comment pages current has a next so you look at you get in the current pages which was, represents the stuff that's in the current page and you're looking at if there is a next if there is it's gonna show this link if there isn't it's not gonna show it so if we jump up to our for loop where we're actually getting the comments that's where comments is it's an array that has our individual comments so the distinction here is that comments get set to and this is an interesting one of those ruby things that takes a second to wrap your head around you're actually setting two things with this call with this method call so you're setting the comments to the individual comments on that given page and this represents the pages coming in there so it's a it's a very powerful tool and if we look in the API here for this tool you can see it returns a paginator and a collection of active record model instances for that current page so back to the code here's our paginator and here's our model an array of our model now if we go down here and look around in here we should be able to find the class for this and here's the class definitions for this so we have all of our methods this is where we got those from current current page each first we have all these different methods if we go in here we can say current 
And then current has different things that we can look at in that page. And here's our current page. So there's different properties, different things we can take a look at here. Let's look at page. Now on page, you can see we're drilling down in here. This is where that next and last come from, or previous in this case, not last. And these return those objects. And nil if it's the last page. And it's the same for previous. Nil if it's the first page. So that's how this code knows in our list right here. When it calls these, it's saying, hey, I got this paginator. I'm looking at the current page. Is there a next one? If so, give me the link. And on this one, is there a previous one? If so, give me the link. Paginators are cool. They're easy to implement. If you use scaffolding to start with, you'll get this code generated for you. Then you can go ahead and explore it at your leisure.